Hello everyone and welcome to the Open NAT Xbox tutorial for Xbox Live. So firstly we're going to open up a web browser and type in what is my IP and if we end up with an address which looks something like this then we know we've got an IPv version 4 address and we can continue with the tutorial. So in a perfect world we'd all have public IPv version 6 addresses as this is the technology which the Xbox Live runs on natively. However, if like me and your internet service provider only gives you a public IPv version 4 address, then this is what we need to do. On a Windows computer, if you right click on the start menu and click on run, then type in CMD and press enter, you will get the command prompt window shown on screen. So in the command window, just type in IP config and press enter. Now don't be scared of these numbers, but it is a good idea to note them down. So the first one where it says IPv version 4 address is the address of this PC that we're on. These first three octets are important, so take a note of whatever you have. The subnet mask, again, it's probably going to be this one, but take a note of it if it's different and the default gateway. Again, take a note of that. That will be your internet facing router. So in our example, we're going to pick an IP address for our Xbox. Please note there's much better ways of doing this. And this is a pretty crude method, but assuming no other device on your network has this address, we can just give it 192.168.64. Notice how those three octets match those three octets. And you can just choose a number like .100. I'm gonna choose .6. After powering on your Xbox console, in this case, we're using an Xbox One standard. Just go to your settings, general and network settings. And then if you just go to advanced settings, you can see it says NAT type moderate on the right hand side. We'll change that shortly, don't worry. If we go to IP settings and manual, this is the point where you'd put the address uh, with the dot 100. So 192.168.64. And then it will be dot one dot one hundred for you. As my network is slightly different, we're going to do sixty four dot six. Subnet mask. If you have a standard network, that's just two five five two five five two five five dot zero. And the gateway. Just put whatever you saw in your command window where it said default gateway. So remember that number. For me, it's slightly different again. So mine would be 192.168.64.254 as that was what was in my default gateway. It's going to ask for a primary and secondary DNS. So this again is the same as your default gateway. Just put that number in. As you see on screen, it's slightly different for me but don't worry about that. Secondary DNS is again slightly different for me. Just put your default gateway. And then just hit enter on that. After you're done entering those details, if you go down to the alternate port selection and choose manual, the default will be 3074. That's the default Xbox Live port. These numbers here will look slightly different on your console. Just pick one, it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to choose the top one, 51094, and make a note of that, and hit continue. It is at this point that we are going to log into our router and make a port forward. So if you remember the number next to your default gateway, if we just type that address into a web browser and hit enter, it will bring up the web administration page of your router. Now you can log in here with the username and password, which is usually found on a sticker on the bottom of the device. So at this point, you're looking for something called port forwarding, perhaps virtual server or port mapping. In my case, it's network, firewall and port forwards. So we're going to add a port forward here. Now it's worth mentioning that I am using OpenWRT 
and I recommend using this distribution because if you try and use one of your ISP provided routers they often don't give you the advanced option which I'm about to show you. So let's give it a sensible name like Xbox One, Xbox Live. The protocol in this instance is just going to be UDP, so I'm going to untick TCP. The source zone is going to be WAN, so that's the internet side of your router. The external port, now that's going to be the alternate port that you chose on your Xbox One console earlier. So for me that was 51094. The destination zone is the LAN, that's your internal network. The internal IP address is going to be the static address that you gave to your Xbox One. So for me, that was actually 192.168.64.6. And the internal port again, if you just pop in the 51094 or whatever you came up with in your alternate port selection. So if I hop over to advanced settings here, this is where we do the little bit of magic, which your ISP router may not be able to perform. So where it says source port, I'm going to put 3544. Now that is the port for Torito tunneling. So I'm just going to hit save and save and apply. So they all look a little bit different depending on what router you've got. But if you can't specify the source like I was able to just there, here's the source port, then you may run into trouble. So you may need to reboot your router at this point. And if we just hop over back over to our Xbox and give the NAT settings a test, we've got a NAT type of moderate right there. And if we press right and test NAT type, it'll say checking connection. And it looks like your NAT type is open. So if you just hit continue, we've got an IPv version 4 NAT type open. So congratulations on getting your NAT type open. I know there's plenty of videos on the internet explaining how to do this. I even have one myself. As it was my first YouTube video, I feel like it was a bit of a car crash. And I think if you watch other people's videos, there's also some misinformation there. I think you'll find people saying, just keep pressing restart on restart test on the Xbox until it says open. Well, of course, that's just no way to get the NAT open. It's just a failing in the Xbox Live NAT test. I also think it's worth mentioning that if you look on support.xbox.com, we've got ports required to use Xbox Live and it lists all the ports available there. It says these ports must be open for Xbox Live to work. And what a lot of people on the internet have interpreted that as is that they need to forward all of these ports, basically make them all forwarded, which is, again, just a bit of misinformation. And that's only because it's not clear on Xbox's website. So I decided to make my own version of what I think their website should look like. So I've got all the ports down the left hand side, I've got the protocols, the direction, which is the important thing and a service name. So we can see port 88, 53, 80, 500, and 4, 500 are all outbound connections. In other words, when you turn your Xbox on, they basically, the connection originates from your Xbox and then it tries and reaches out towards the internet. And the default behavior of your router is normally to allow that connection anyway. So no port forward required. If you look at the two that I've put in red, 3074, that's the default Xbox Live port. Remember in this video, we changed that to something or other, 50,000. And we've got 3544 as well, which is your Torito. So because those are inbound, as in we want to allow connections inbound from the internet, those are the ones that we need to port forward. And in the example you've just watched, if you specify the source as 3544, you can do it all in one port forward. I also think it's worth mentioning that there are better ways to set a static address on your Xbox. For example, instead of doing it manually on the Xbox console itself, it's actually much better 
to do it via your router. You can configure addresses to be handed out, but I won't explain how to do that here. And also, if you can use UPnP, you should try that first before port forwarding, as that is the preferred way of getting your Xbox Live NAT to open. And again, just one final mention for IPv version 6. You may have that running on your internal network, but if you're like me, your external internet provider, if they're only giving you an IPv version 4 address, you have to sort of jump through a few hoops to get the network working correctly. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this has helped a lot of people and I will see you in the next one.